Hi everyone, I'm Film Club reporter Matt and welcome to the fourth afternoon of our live webcast celebrating the Olympics in sports in film. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yay! Hello, my name is Ben, I work at Film Club in the communications team and today me and Matt are interviewing some very special people indeed. Jerry Ruffwell and also Daniel De Messi and they are the director and the producer of a fantastic, a spellbinding and very emotive documentary called Town of Runners. And also just quickly, we're interactive, we're live. We're live, which means you can send in questions to our guests today. Right, enough of the jazz hands. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to. Let's go. Right then, hello, Derek, Jerry and Daniel, and welcome to the Film Club Webcast Studio. Hi. Hello. <laughs> right then, Jerry, could, please could you tell us a little bit about Town of Runners? OK, so Town of Runners is a film about a small uh, village in Ethiopia up in the mountains um, which has this amazing record of producing brilliant long distance runners. I think they've won eight Olympic gold medals, wow. 10 uh, world records yeah. and, and 32 world championships. Ma amazing place. And it's about two girls in that town who want to be runners. Great then. Um, Ryan and Katrina from St Edmund Arrowsmith Catholic High School ask ask a question for Daniel. How long did the film actually take to make? Well, that's a good question around Katrina. Is that, um, I think from the first idea, it would have been 2007, was when we started, just from the idea, and started filming in 2008. So I would suppose it would be about just a three and a half years? Yeah, I think we three finished in 2011. Wow. Is it something, did you ever live there for a while, or were you just sort of hopping back? Or? Uh, we went back and forth, about, I think it was about eight times, but I, I'd stayed after we shot for a while, because I had a lot of family there. Um, yeah, so. Tell us a bit more about your personal, you've got a personal yeah, connection. Well, I, most of my family background is from Ethiopia, so both my parents from Ethiopia, and over the course of the film, because I'd never been before I'd made, we made the film, before we went the first time, so uh, as part of that, I got to know all of my family as well, which is, uh, which is a bonus. Was, and also where I was from. Yeah, efficient as well. Yeah, exactly. Cool. <laughs> uh, we spoke, we've spoken about the film and we, we teased you about it. And maybe maybe we're, as you watch this, think about your village. Do you have over 10 world records coming out of your town? <laughs> it's a remarkable story indeed. And here's our first clip, which is a race which sees the two main characters, Harwi and Alemi. Good luck, girls. Good luck. Come on. Jamuf <laughs> Ah, uh, screen tablo ba asra asra letto tatara. Screen bola manu bevelle. Wow. Indeed. Daniel, I've got a question for you. Um, it's often said that media has a stereotypical image of mm -hmm. Ethiopia. Can you tell mm -hmm. us what you think that is and whether the film actually breaks it or tries to? Well, I think that, especially if you're kind of um, my age or maybe a bit older, um, the experience of Ethiopia that you'd have seen, I think a lot of people would have seen in the media and TV and newspapers, is going to be mainly about famine and war and things like that, which... Um, issues that are there that you can't really ignore and things have happened but it's not really the full picture I think it's kind of like saying 
if you if you made a film about UK or something that you said it was all about, I don't know, the the rain, rain, <laughs> rain, yeah, well, it probably would rain, but rain and, and traffic and just all things like that. That'd be a ten-hour documentary, yeah, exactly, <laughs> which I wouldn't watch, but it would be. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I think uh, one of the things we wanted to do in the film was to try and show a, like a fuller picture of what what uh, what the real situation is in the country. Great. I think you definitely achieved that, and that comes across yeah. in the reviews we got um, for our film. We'll mention one of them later, and you can review the film on our site today and also order it. And um, I was just wondering, out of the whole town of Runners, for the story, there's loads of people. How did you actually choose Harwi, Alimi, and Brooke, and why did you choose them? Um, um, there was, I mean, there, there's, yeah, there's 16,000 people in the town. Um, when we first went, we asked uh, the coach, who's the, the basically been working in the, ta- in the town as the athletics coach for 30 years, to bring together five or six young people who, who might be interested in making a film. Uh, and Howie, Alemi and Baruch were, were three of those five or six people. And I think when we, we spent a lot of time with Howie and Alemi, and we really liked the way they were sort of very good friends with each other. And that somehow took us outside the world of running. We wanted the film to be more about more than just running. And Baruch had helped us a lot with um, filming as well. And I think there came a time where we thought, that Baruch sort of works in this kiosk on the side of the main road in Bakoji. He sort of sees life go by. And I think there was a point where we thought it's really useful to have that character who can tell us how the town is changing and what's happening in the town. We, re- we really like that bond uh, yeah. between, between the two girls, and that, despite these races being highly competitive yeah. um, the whole time. She comes first, she comes second. <laughs> yeah. She comes second, she comes first. <laughs> no, the, whole, the whole time they, re- they remain f- friends, which was great. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Daniel, I want to talk about some of the sacrifices um, that these uh, young children have to make. What do they have to do to, br- to get out of their town and become the very best? Well, day to day, the... Um, Training with the coach is very early in the morning. So how sounds, early? Come on, sounds about six, isn't it? Yeah. Six a.m. And yeah. imagine doing that when you've got school and housework and all and everything else after that. Cross country once a month was enough yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's on that level, there's the kind of day to day commitment that you have to have. But then also, as you see in the film, that the girls were, to to go to that next stage to. To, to get into a club, then you have to move home, move away from their town and their family and their friends to somewhere that they don't know anything about or what the conditions are like. So that is obviously a big sacrifice and a really big step and I think really forces people, uh, the, the kids to grow up. Again, that's the power of that friendship that you focused on because you wouldn't want to go through some of the things they went through by yourself. So there's a really powerful moment where they've both been at different running camps. One's had a very difficult time. And when they meet up, there's immediately tears and an embrace yeah. and high fives. And it's probably one of the most powerful parts in the film. It's really good. Yeah. Um, also, Jerry, could you tell us a bit about the hardships that Harley faced in her camp? And were you actually ever tempted to help her? Yeah, I mean, when, <coughs> when they go to these two different camps, uh, Alemi's camp is, is quite good. It's from a, a very prosperous town and they can afford to keep their runners well, if you like. Uh, Howie's, the town that Howie goes to is a much poorer town and I think probably the local community would rather the money was spent on a new road than on their athletics club. Yeah. Uh, so eventually the girls are kind of left pretty much without a coach, uh, sometimes without food um, and without accommodation. Um, so it's very hard for them and, and in fact now I think 50 out of 52 athletes in that club have left. Um, mm. But it's also very hard for them to leave the club because as soon as you leave, um, it's very hard for another club to pick you up because they'd have to pay the old club for, oh, okay. for, for what they've put into you. I mean, in terms of whether we were sort of tempted to, to help and to do what we could, of course, whilst we were filming, we did do that. Um, but in the end, you can't... Uh, I think, you know, you're only there for two or three weeks. You might be able to change it for those two or three weeks, but you probably can't change it for everyone long term. And you hope that the film can change things. Um, so I suppose our role was to document what was happening to, to sort of help out as much as we could. Um, but beyond that, it's about getting the film out there and, and making change that way. Hmm. Now, um, we have a question from the Notre Dame Roman Catholic School for both of you. Uh, which filmmaker do you most admire and, in the industry and do they influence your own work? 
Um, yeah, I mean, lo- lots of different filmmakers, but um, one that comes to mind in documentary would be someone like Errol Morris, guy called Errol Morris, who has made a, n- a whole series of sort of fabulous documentaries, which are all based on people telling their own story. And uh, he's got this technique where they tell it straight into the camera, and I think it's a very powerful kind of way of, of filmmaking. Personal technique. Yeah. What about, Ver- what about Werner? Do you like about Werner? Werner, yeah, no, I do like Werner Herzog. So <laughs> the thing I like about Werner Herzog is that he's kind of very... Oh, yeah. Every film he makes is like an improvisation, and there's some bits in it which are terrible, and there are some bits in it which are fantastic. And the film sort of swings between these two things. He's it's very exciting. You just never know what's going to happen next. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's the same when he was in the studio, actually. <laughs> uh, he was in that very seat uh, a few months ago. Ooh. Extraordinary man. We asked him if he watched, if he goes to the cinema much. He went, no, I just walk the streets. <laughs> so that's how he finds the yeah. stories. What about uh, yourself, Annie? Was there um, any filmmakers, any producers you look up to? Well, I always liked, I know he's old and gone, but Kubrick was one of my favourites. I was actually talking about him the other day because we were I was talking to my friends about, oh, about sometimes these great directors, you know, they make a, a few good, film, a, a good films early on in their career and then they tail off. But I think that... Over his career, he made such a wide range of films and such high quality of different kinds. So what have we got there? Two thousand and one. Yeah, Pass of Glory, yeah. Barry Lyndon, that's, that's Orange. Orange. There's lot, Orange. There's lot, we have lots of his films on the site, so yeah. again, check out for that Maybe. for a brilliant filmmaker. Good suggestions. Yes. Right then, we're now going to watch the second clip from Town of Runners, and it's where we see Alimi living away from home, so she can train and go to school. ولا يوجي بموكت على يوم جمرو كايت يقارنو يمنورو عالميم زيوني يمتنورو يبيت سوتشا منوريا كزي كتما وطا سلميل بس راك انا تزي تنورادتش يهم بكلالو تمرت بيت يتمنالتا تشورچوان اند تكتاتل رتواتال Malat interesting and emotive stuff like as, as every clip that we're going to show today. One of the things I want to talk to you about is reviews. Yeah. So I reckon your film presumably gets reviewed by magazines, films, glossy stuff, yeah. festivals. But how much does it mean to you that young people review your film and actually interact with it and enjoy it? I think that's really, really important to us because when we first embarked on making the film, I think um, it's a film about young people, but we wanted it to be accessible and young people to have an idea of the culture and the world that um, the characters live in. So hopefully as many young people can watch it as possible. I was glad you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've got a review from here. They're all very much along this, uh, along this topic, but this one was, seemed extra special to us. It's from Theon, who's age 12 from Hawkley Hall High School. Has given you a huge thumbs up for this film, and Matt's going to read it. Um, she said that this film opened my eyes up to how determined people can be, no matter where they're from. This film really inspired me to always go for the gold, even if I think I can't, and to fight for my dreams until I get there. That's great. great. That's not yeah, bad, yeah. Yeah. It's a really great bad, review. So, hey, thanks, for you. you can keep that one. Yeah. <laughs> laminate, <laughs> laminate that one. Right, Daniel, um, yeah. you helped Jerry make this film while you were still a student at film school. How did you actually manage to balance both things out? Yeah. You're hard work. <laughs> you are hard work. <laughs> well, when they very kindly gave me some time to go off and be with Jerry in the field making the film, it was, uh, it was just a good experience to, to learn about making a film um, whilst learning in, in the education and... It was just a case of trying to use the experiences that I had in film school uh, whilst we were shooting and vice versa. So it worked quite well together, I think. Definitely. Well Great. done. <laughs> Double jobs, brilliant stuff. <laughs> cool. And um, we're now going to have a look at the final clip of Town and Runners. And this shows you just how difficult it is to be selected. <laughs> ማከላት በየቦታው እየተሰሩ ናቸው 
እዛ ውስጥ መልምሎ ለማስገባትም ያመቻቻል ምን ይፒካርቦ ኮስቶ ደና ደናዎቹ ባትሌት ውድድር ሁሉም ለማለፍ ይጥራል ነገር ግን ሁሉም ይሳካለታል ማለት አይደለም ወርሜ ሰላማይ ፈክተር ለዚህ ነው ተጠን እንደየ ማቲያው ከነሱ በጣም አነስ ስለምል በርሜ ያ ወርሚያቸው አው በእኛ ከለር ሳይሆን በሌላ ከለር ሲታይ ማለት ነው 19 ምናምን የሚሉት 15 16 ይሆን ይገባሉ እና በጣም ትላልቁኝ ስለሆኑ እነዚህ ራሱ ላይ ይችላሉ ይችላሉ አይታውቅ ውድድሩ የሚካሄደው ባሰላ ነው ሶስት ሰዓት ከተጋዙ በኋላ ይህ የጭቃ መንገር ሲያበቃ ማለት ነው Great then that was a uh, quite good clip. Um I have to take my GCSE options next year. So what subjects should students study if they want to go on to film school? To be a filmmaker. I think I mean I think it's it's I think almost any subject is really useful because it's helpful to know how to make films but it's also to helpful to to know stuff to make films about you know mm -hmm. so if you study biology you know you can maybe end up making wildlife films if you study uh, uh, history you can maybe end up making films about history i think all all kind of sides of learning are important and actually the skills to make a film i don't think in themselves are that complicated so that's that's so you... but yeah, yeah, is, it, is, is it really helping your career that you're you know you're studying your learning techniques Yeah, it, it is really helping, but like when I was doing GCSEs and A-levels and things like that, and even university, I never did a lot of it. It was like a geography degree. I did English, and I think I agree with Jerry in that if you can kind of keep things open, as well as, well as if you still want to you know, concentrate on filmmaking, but it's just good to have a breadth of knowledge, I think, because it helps, because you... interest in the world. I think your films actually a really good mirror for if you do want to become a filmmaker. If you look at the uh, the children involved in it, they don't just run and that's it. Mm. They run hard and then they work hard at school as well, which gives them lots of different options and they often complement each other. So I think that's a good little combo. Right then, um we have a question for Jerry from Maddie and Harry at St Edmund's Arrowsmith High S Catholic High School. Um what is your next film about? Oh, hi. We want, uh, we want exclusives. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Harry. Uh, the next film is about um, the founders of Greenpeace. Um, so Greenpeace, which is a big you know, environmental campaigning organisation, was founded in the early 1970s by a small group of friends who decided they would take a boat into, the, uh, uh, into a nuclear test zone off Alaska. Um, and it's the story of that voyage and the things that happened afterwards. So how's the um, filming gone so far? I'm um, right at the beginning now. I've done I've sort of begun the kind of research, but uh, at the moment we haven't started shooting yet. Great. Looking forward to that one. Right. It um, ends up on our site. Oh, we've got a Twitter question, haven't we? Dun, dun, dun. We said we were interactive, now we're proving it. <laughs> right, um, we have so that one. Yeah. Right, we have a Twitter question from Aldenham Film Club. Um, what is your earliest film memory? <laughs> I didn't see many films when I was a kid because my dad, um, for some reason, didn't really like seeing things that, that he hadn't already seen. So what <laughs> happened is we, we ended up going to see The Jungle, Jungle Book over and over and over again. Whenever we went to the cinema, we'd like, look at what was on and he'd go, well, the only one we've seen is The Jungle Book. And we knew that was good. So we saw that about 12 or 13 times. But it's a good film. That's a lot of times. Um, <laughs> There's also a question from Ordinham. They said, um, Jim... When did you realise you first wanted to make films? Was there a certain moment for you or a certain film that you saw which really thought, I, I like the idea of this? Or was it a gradual process? Uh, I think the first film that I saw when I was a kid was Back to the Future was the film that made me think, ah, oh, this is amazing. I'd love to do something like this. It's just like the perfect feel. film. But, um, yeah, may maybe not the, the critic's choice, but it's definitely a great film. And I, I think it took a while for me to actually... kind of realised in myself that this is really what I wanted to do. So, in hindsight, I wish I'd come round to that a bit earlier. But <laughs> You're here now. <laughs> but I'm here now. You're in a so, film club studio. So, yeah. Oh, great stuff. Right, we're done. Right. We're done. It's been great talking to you.
We've dipped under the line, we've finished, we've got our time. We've all got our medals, yep. you can't we see them. We've run past the finish line we'll and get got them. the gold. Hey, he's, he's working with the analogy, I like this guy. <laughs> uh, thank you so much uh, thank for talking you. to us and ans answering our questions. Yeah. And also thank you for letting your film be on our site. Um, clearly our members absolutely love it, they've really been moved by it and we're really proud to be associated with the film. Thank you very much. And also thank, thank you. you to everyone who's been watching. Uh, please tune in tomorrow at 4pm when we will be uh, talking to the schools team and finding out about some more Olympic films to get you in the mood for the games. Come on, come on, GB. Come on, go on Team GB. Goodbye. Bye. Wait, Bye. 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 <laughs>